trainer. Now, they're animals. They, we make mistakes as humans, right? We're not perfect. Well, they're not either, and that's okay. They can make mistakes as well. Failure is a good thing. <laughs> so if they make a mistake, they simply just don't hear the whistle. And they just, the trainers will just give them a little three to five second pause. Again, drawing the least amount of attention to it, and that just lets them know, hey, that wasn't exactly what we were looking for. Clapping, that's another one. <laughs> they feed off of our energy. So if they do something that's correct and we're really excited about it, you want to show them that, right? You're not just going to sit there and be like, yay, good job. No, <laughs> right? That's not very reinforcing, and they can feed off of that. So clapping, you might see the trainers, you know, getting excited for them, and feel free to get excited for them as well. So get things started. Over here to the right, <laughs> everyone say hello to Keith, and then we've got Ulysses over on the left side. Floppy <laughs> them. Matthew. So you can see Keith right there, you guys see he's got that fish tail hanging out of his mouth. That was a nice giant salmon, probably a good five to six pound salmon there. They get a nice variety of fish, herring, capelin, mackerel, salmon. It's all divided out and given to them each day. Now, they have anywhere from about 45 to 55 teeth inside of their mouths. They are conically shaped, and what that means is that when they close their mouths, they interlock like a zipper. They don't, they're not flat like ours. They don't really chew their food. They can use their teeth to kind of break down larger fish. So you can see Keith was kind of breaking down that salmon into smaller chunks, but pretty much they're going to swallow everything whole. So even if you see a trainer kind of giving them those big handfuls of fish, they're not chewing that fish down. They're swallowing it whole. Wow, Kiara, the whales. All right, so as I mentioned, we've got Keith and Ulysses in here. Our trainers have taken a moment to step away. Now, we talked a little bit about training, right? If an animal is correct, we sound the whistle. If they're incorrect, or they don't do anything at all, we simply just don't sound their whistle. And guess what? These animals can choose to participate in their sessions if they want to. They have free reign of the pool. You see the whale? They know where their trainers are at for an interaction. It is 100% up to them if they would like to participate. Now, uh, right now, we step down. You saw Keith come over. He did an awesome, cute little pose over here. But Ulysses is kind of wanting to just swim around. <laughs> you can see he came over. He was like, maybe next time. That's the whale. Not right now. I kind of want to swim some laps. But you know what? That's okay. That's the That's his way of communicating to us. I'm going to let him take some time. So you can see the trainer just kind of stepped away for a moment. And we'll give him another shot again in just a moment. So again, failure is okay. We want them to know that that is all right during a session, right? And sometimes even when they get in a behavior incorrect, they've got a good attitude and they're really positive and they're engaged. We can even feed them for that, right? Because that's important. Kind of the same thing with us in school. We might not always get everything correct, but if you've got a positive attitude about it, it's gonna be okay in the end, right? <laughs> So we talked a little bit about how we communicate with the whales, the hand signals, the whistles, right? Now initially when we start training our whales, we use what's called a target pole. It's a long stick with a buoy right at the end. It kind of looks like a giant Q-tip. It's not, I promise. <laughs> Their ears are actually incredibly tiny. Believe it or not, the whales do have ears. It's a tiny little pimple right on the sides of their heads, behind their eyes. You're not even going to be able to see them unless you're really up close. So it looks like a giant Q-tip. That is called a target pole. They're initially trained to touch the end of their mouth to the end of that target pole. Basically, what we've done over time is every time their, their mouth touches the end of that target pole, we sound right, buddy, the whistle, and we so give them some go, sort on. of reinforcement, whether it's fish, ice cubes, jello. And over time, they kind of pair that, right? Every time I touch this pole, I get something awesome out of it, right? So eventually, when we start to kind of move that target pole away, seeing if they'll follow, they kind of know, hey, I need to touch that target pole, because every time I do, that's when something positive happens, right? Or if I don't touch it, there, nothing happens. They're not really doing anything. So once you've established that connection, you can move that target pole around to shape different behaviors. So let's take, for example, a front flip. Now, a single behavior can take weeks, months, even years to train. So I'm just going to kind of give you a brief little uh, overview of it. So let's say a front flip. 
they're trained to touch the end of that target pole with their mouth, right? So let's say I start to take that target pole and I dip it into the water. Well, their head's gonna follow, right? Let's say I do a full circle, full rotation, and they're following it with their head. What's their body gonna do? The rest of their body's just gonna kind of follow, right? Make that circular motion as I make that circular motion. Once they've established that, over time, you can raise that target pole a little bit higher and higher and higher out of the water until you get that front flip rotation. Now, all throughout this process, you're using some, you're asking them with some sort of hand signal. So every time you do that circular rotation, you're showing that hand signal at the same time. So they see the connection there. Every time I see the trainer do that hand signal, they're asking for this particular behavior. So then over time, you can slowly remove that target pull away, that's the help, and just ask with that hand signal. Now sometimes we need to revert back to the basics. They forget sometimes, you know, it's okay. We can use that target pull for taps. Sometimes you'll see trainers tapping at a pool and just removing the target pull. That might be asking where we'd like them to emit that behavior. Or maybe if they've, it's been some time, the behavior that you're asking might not be as high as when you first trained it. So you might need to remind them. So you might see the trainers holding that target pull up in the air, letting them know this is how high we'd like it to go. So. That is kind of how we shape those different behaviors. So it looks like the trainers have now come back again. <laughs> you might have just heard some of those uh, vocals right there, those clicks and whistles that you hear come from the killer whale's blow hole on the top of their head. Now killer whales don't have vocal cords like us. They are actually incapable of making sounds from their mouths. So again, all those sounds that you hear come from the top of their head. Do you see him? Wow. And you'll notice Keith just came out to the center of the pool and slapped his pectoral flipper down onto the water. Those flippers on the sides of their bodies, that's what they're called, pectoral flippers. If you were to take an x-ray of those flippers, they have a skeletal structure that's similar to the human hand. So there are bones in there, which is how they're able to move them and manipulate them. Their dorsal fin, however, notice I'm calling it a fin, not a flipper. Okay, they just dorsal two fin more is a in. fin on their back. Now, the difference between the two, all right, we got two more whales joining us. Did you see that? That is Nakai and Orchid joining us. Remember I said there's five pools, so they just surprised us from one of the back pools. <laughs> all right, so back to flippers and fins. Flippers, the ones on the sides of their bodies, flippers have bones, fins do not. That is the biggest difference between the two. Inside of it. So they actually have no control over it. So that brings up another common question. As you can see with Keith and Schlissy's here, why does the dorsal fin curve over, right? Well, again, they don't have any control over it. And that's a, well, hopefully we won't. And depending on the animals, some animals spend more time at the surface. Oh, really? Which gravity will do its job and pull it down if there's any sort of temperature over time. Or some animals spend more time under the water where they have support from the water to keep that large structure up. All right, so real quick, over here to the right, here comes Orchid onto the slide outs. What do you think about that? Huh? I don't own a lot. So you might also be wondering how you know which whale is which. You see them for just a quick glance. They look so similar. But that dorsal fin, as I was just talking about, is one way. They all have very different dorsal fins. Whether they're here at SeaWorld or out in the wild, it's kind of like a fingerprint. You'll never see uh, dorsal fins, the same dorsal fin on each whale. Also, other physical characteristics. Any uh, special markings that they might have? Oh, yes. Oh, here he is. All right, so focus your attention to the back center of the pool. That was Nakai, everybody. And right where Nakai just jumped, focus your attention there, we've got Keith coming out on that same behavior. Take your jumps.
Where's he gonna come? <laughs> yep, oh, there he is. Ow. Very nice. Yeah, he did a small little jump. Hey, Billy! Over there, look. All right, Keith's going to come out to the center of the pool and do what's called a spy hop behavior. So he's just going to kind of bob up and down, showing off a beautiful black and white coloration. Here he comes right about now. Oh, <laughs> and he got a little confused. That's okay. So I think you guys saw earlier, Keith went out and did that uh, peck slap earlier. So he kind of has that in his mind. And you know what? That's okay. Watch what Jen does. Didn't sound the whistle, right? Whistle means yes. You know what? He got the whistle because he returned to his trainer. He has a good attitude, and that's okay. We want to let him know, you know what? You didn't get it right, but good try. Like moving. Oh, here, I'll change it for you. Oh, 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 oh. See you? Now, you might have just heard that sound that kind of sounded like a telephone oh, ringing. It's the same, oh, well, splash warning. <laughs> a little bit. Not too bad. That sound that you heard is the same thing as our whistle. It's just a tone that submits under the water as well. So that way on those higher energy behaviors that might be creating a lot of noise or maybe something that where their head is underwater but they're not going to really be able to hear a whistle, they can hear that tone instead and it means the exact same thing. Another really cool thing with those tones, we talked about how we pair the hand signal as we're training the behaviors, right? Well, once they've known a behavior for a while, they uh, don't need help with it. What we've actually done with some of the uh, behaviors that they know is we've now paired a sound with it. So this tone box can actually submit yeah. all sorts of different sounds. Yeah. So what we do is we pair the hand signal with the sound at the same time, and over time they uh, can they pair the two, and you can actually just push the sound with them right in front of you, and they should be able to emit that behavior that you're asking. So just another way to kind of keep things variable. That is another important part of our day, is making sure that things aren't predictable, because that can get kind of boring if they do the same thing every day, all day, right? So like I said, we've got 10 whales. We can put them in different pools, put them in different social structures. We can use them for different parts of the uh, presentations. You saw earlier Ulysses, you know, he was like, mm, I'm okay, I kind of rather just swim around. But you know what? We gave him a second chance. He was doing really well. So Ulysses is now in another pool with other whales. It just kind of gave him up and hey, thank you so much for participating. You know what? You showed us earlier, you weren't really digging it, so. Now we're going to go over here and have some fun time in another pool with some other whales. So, different ways to just kind of break it up for them. And then there's those ice cubes. We talked about another fun treat as a type of reinforcement. And that was Keith giving you guys a beautiful wave of his tail flukes, killer whale style. 
Same thing with their dorsal fins. Their tail flukes don't Aren't have they? any bone inside of them or uh, muscle, so you can see his curve in. Some of them are flat, or if you're Shuka, she's the only one of our 10 whales who curve up. Orchid, yeah, it's orchid. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Yep, I think he wants a little bit more than that, Jen. <laughs> Orchid and Keat. Alright, so now joining Keat, we have Orchid. She's actually the first killer whale mm. born here at SeaWorld San Diego in center of the pool orchid's gonna come out in the middle right about yeah. Wow. all right now key is gonna come to the back center of the pool Come on over by where that blue ball is hanging. Focus your attention right about there. Right about now. And there's Orchid doing a spy hop behavior. Now, Orchid is so incredibly smart. She can pick up on new behaviors just like that. So what Mike was doing right there was trying to pair two different behaviors. The spy hop is just a straight up and down. And a hula is where they kind of spin around. So he wanted her to spin while going up and down. The first time he asked, she didn't quite get it. She was just kind of spinning. Then he asked her for the spy hop this time while he spun his body as she came up. You can see she responded to it real well and got it on that second try. So he's going to try asking it again. So he's turning, asking for the spy hop. Let's see if she gets it. She should come up and down while rotating. And she got it. <laughs> We're going to try for one more. We're going to try for one more. Awesome job, Orchid. So that right there, I mean, you just saw a little bit of just how they think and how they, you know, respond to when we ask for uh, different behaviors. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so it is time for our presentation to come to an end. So Orchid and Keith are going to come out to the center of the pool one last time. So get your cameras ready. On behalf of the dying staff, the trainers, and of course our amazing killer whales, we want to thank you so much for joining us here today and hope you have a great day here at SeaWorld. Bye-bye, everybody.